you can see the progress that, that has been made with someone just pushing. Um, and sometimes it's people who make it difficult in the beginning, who, who take the difficult route. They're the ones that have bashed their head on the concrete ceiling or the glass ceiling that have broken through and let other people come through. So um, it, it's, it's a way of kind of saying, just do it. <laughs> and use whatever expertise and experience you have to, to get yourself in the way. Um, I don't think we need to think about uh, whether we're alienated from society or not. Each and every one of us is different. Each and every one of us has a contribution. You just have to look at the, in today's middle pages of The Guardian, and there's a, there's a whole double spread of the soldiers and the people who died in Afghanistan. And it's, there's somebody's child, there's somebody's brother, there's somebody's um, uncle or son, and every one of them is an individual death and is an individual person, and that's what we're here for. And that's, I suppose, what I'm, uh, to add to the previous uh, point I was making, about our own experience. We all have our own experience, and some will have it easier, and some will have it more difficult. But the thing is, as my brother often tells me, just enjoy it. And that's what I try to do, even though there are difficult times, and you go through cycles, uh, whenever you're in, in, in any sort of a job, or as a doctor, as a lawyer, as a teacher, as a mother. Um, everything, each day is different and you just have to take the difficult days with the good days. In the International Women's Debate <coughs> today in the House of Commons, there was cross-party um, support for the uh, debate. And so we had Tory women sitting opposite us and uh, women from the Liberal Democrats and some men there who also support. And, and let, don't, don't get me wrong, men can be feminists and I, I know very many men who are feminists who totally support women and who totally support women's right to be equal. Um, and it was a very interesting debate because um, whatever happens, the fact is there are 1.1 million women unemployed at the minute. However you care to look at it, that's a fact and that's been the highest since 1988. So it's, it's a cause for concern, because in, in jobs like the public sector, where women can find it as their first job, maybe it's an admin job to give them a bit of confidence, um, they take that job first and then they can move on to something else. Um, what I would say to you is, if anyone is thinking of anything to do with politics, do, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I don't mind which party you want to belong to, have a set of vision, have an idea, have a vision of what you want to see society to be, and then get involved. Because in the end, the decisions are made in politics. Every decision is a political decision, and we all play our part um, in politics, whether you're making a decision about which brand of uh, complex you're going to buy, that's a political decision. Whether you're deciding which doctor you're going to, that's a political decision, or which school you're sending your children to, or what course you're taking in life. Everything is a political decision, and we all should take our part. There's no saying that men should be um, politicians and women shouldn't be. Everyone has to do it. Um, my family, my mother and my father, always said, and there were three of us, an, uh, an older sister and, and Keith and, and myself, um, they always believed that, that you could do anything you wanted. It didn't matter whether I was a male or female or anything. They always said you can do anything you want, and any job is open to you. I'm also left-handed, and at one stage when I was at school, some of the nuns, I'm a Catholic, some of the nuns wanted to change me to be a right-handed person, but my mother just said, no, nope, let her do it, um, let her be the way she is. And that's the third message, be who you are. Um, what, I, what struck me really amazingly in that debate was, although it was partly party political, there was a consensus, because I have to say that in the Labour Party, we did make great inroads in having all women shortlists. And a lot, a lot of women didn't uh, take, a, take offence to the fact that there are quotas or there are special, special groups or special numbers for women. But I say it doesn't really matter how you get there. If you're there, that's it. You do the job and you can get the experience. You can get the experience on the job. And what I take great inspiration from is a group of Tanzanian women MPs who came, um, Tanzanian MPs, yes, they were women who came to the House of Commons and part of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, they shadowed each one of us. I have to say that my, my shadow was extremely exhausted at the end of it. She said, you work really hard. I think they meet four times a year. But the fact is, they had special quotas for women and they've got 36% of their parliament, uh, members of parliament are women. That's more than the House of Commons at 22.3%. 
So there's a lesson for you. And what was their answer? We'd like to increase it to 50%. That's where they're heading. What they had was a woman at the head called Mama. <laughs> That's what they called her. And she was their mentor. And she supported them. And some of them were completely inexperienced. They said, I've never done this before. And I went out on the doorstep. I was the only candidate, only female candidate against all the others. The men were saying horrible things. You'll never get in. You'll never do this. She worked hard and she got through. And that's the story of all of them. They went out campaigning and they did it and they won. And they were sitting there in London as part of a delegation meeting us because they worked hard and they persevered and they didn't care what anybody said. They just carried on. Women's education, for me, is one of the most important things. Um, and you all know the quotation that Gandhi used, and, and is, is attributed to lots of other people too, that if you educate the mothers, you educate the nation. And that's the next thing I want to take that you to take away from this evening. You're all inspiring. The fact that you're sitting here on a Thursday evening um, and listening to us, it's, and it's an inspiration to be here, and the, fact that, and the fact that there's a baby in here, so someone has actually <laughs> taken the trouble to come here, despite the double work that they do. We work hard as home workers, and we work hard in our jobs, if, that's, if, if, if you do a job, but being a mother is also a very, very important job, because you're educating the next generation. So thank you for being here, thank you for listening to me, and good luck with your journey.